Yeah, now's not a great time to buy a graphics card. I'm Jake with Digital Trends, and I'm here to give you a few tips and tricks to optimize any Windows PC for gaming so you don't have to pay these just insane prices. Buying a new graphics card really isn't an option right now, but if you know where to look, you can still squeeze some extra performance out of your PC. Before diving in, make sure to click the subscribe button below. We're almost to a million subs and we need your help to get there. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a like as well. I'm gonna be covering a lot of software throughout this video, so you can find links to everything in the description below. I wanna give you some hard performance numbers, so I put together a small PC using mid-range hardware from a few years ago. We're rocking an AMD Ryzen 7 1700X, an eight gigabyte AMD RX 580, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. This would cost around $800 or $900 a few years ago, but a lot of that's just the processor. I just don't have the Ryzen 5 on hand. Overall, this is fairly representative of a $600 to $700 PC from a few years ago. With this PC, I wanna run Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p. That's my goal. After running the in-game benchmark, I'm getting an average FPS of 38 with minimums around 28 and maximums just barely hitting 40. My goal is to get that up to 60 frames per second. So at each step, I'm gonna rerun this benchmark so you can see how much progress we're making. I'm splitting this video into two main sections. These first two tips are best practices you should already be doing, and the last three are things you can do to boost your performance even further. A good place to start is update everything, and I mean literally everything. Windows updates are where you wanna start first. Press Windows key plus S at the same time and search for Windows update. There, click check for updates, I've already done it here, and download everything that's available. This might not seem important for gaming, but it's one of the most important things you can do. I remember years ago booting into CSGO for the first time with just terrible performance, like 20 FPS average terrible. It turns out there was a bug in my chipset, so I ran a Windows update and I easily jumped into the 100 plus FPS territory. The main thing Windows updates won't catch are your graphics card drivers. I'm using an AMD card here, but the process is the same no matter which brand of GPU you have. All you need to do is Google your graphics card name with the word driver. So in this case, RX 580 drivers. And you can click the top result from AMD or Nvidia. Alternatively, you can update your driver if you already have Radeon software or GeForce experience installed. Radeon software is for AMD, so open it up and look for this little box on the right. Click check for updates and download what you need. GeForce experience is for Nvidia graphics cards and it's just as easy. Open it up, click the drivers tab at the top and download the latest driver. Both AMD and Nvidia allow you to do clean installs which remove previous graphics card drivers. Do the clean install just to make sure you don't have any conflicts with previous drivers and restart your computer when you're done. I'm using the latest driver here so there's no reason to rerun the benchmark. Some drivers may not do anything and others may offer a pretty large performance improvement. Either way, keep your stuff up to date. This is really important. Then we have XMP or Extreme Memory Profile. Basically, RAM runs at a standard speed no matter what speed is printed on the box. To get the rated speed, let's say 3200 megahertz, you need to turn on XMP. XMP is basically an overclocking profile for your RAM and it's already included on your modules. To enable it, you'll need to enter your motherboard's BIOS. All you need to do is turn off your PC and turn it back on again. And while it's booting, spam the delete key on your keyboard, not the backspace key, and your BIOS will open up. Every BIOS is different, so I can't give you a go here, do this list of instructions. You're just looking for XMP or extreme memory profile, and you wanna turn it on. So here I'm in the gigabytes BIOS and I can see advanced memory settings. I wanna overclock my memory, so I'm gonna go in there. And sure enough, right at the top, XMP is the first setting and it's disabled. So I'm going to select that and go to profile one. This profile is already included on your modules and it's what you need to hit the rated speed of your memory. Once you're done with that, you want to save your settings and exit the BIOS. This is usually the last option. And you can see here, I just hit save and exit setup and then XMP is enabled. All right, I'm back in Windows and I reran the Cyberpunk benchmark and we're actually getting the exact same frame rate. This illustrates a really important point about XMP and that's that it doesn't apply in every game. 
Some games will benefit more while others will not benefit at all. Still, it's really important to turn on XMP because if you don't, you might accidentally leave some extra performance on the table. It seems obvious enough, but your in-game settings have a lot of bandwidth. You can double and sometimes even triple your frame rate just by tweaking the options you have in-game. I've done a much more in-depth video about how to optimize games, so make sure you watch that for all the details. For now, the main things to look out for are lighting, shadows, and reflections. These settings are the most demanding, and they should be the first ones you reach for. Anti-aliasing can also be demanding, so that's a good saying to bump down if you're running into issues, and texture quality can be taxing, especially if you have limited video memory. I'm gonna go through the process in Cyberpunk 2077 really quickly, just so you can see what it looks like. So I'm running on the high preset, and there's a bunch of stuff at the top that I don't really care about. For texture quality, the RX 580 has plenty of video memory, so that shouldn't be an issue, and things like film grain and chromatic aberration just don't really impact performance that much. Down here in the advanced section, there's a lot more things to tweak. First thing, I'm going to turn down a bunch of shadow settings that are turned up really above medium. Cascaded shadow range, that can go down to medium. Distant shadow resolution, for shadows that are really far away, we can just bump that down to low. And volumetric fog, which can be pretty demanding, we can bump that down to medium as well. I'm actually gonna turn off the volumetric cloud quality because volumetric clouds aren't really that important. That's not mainly what we're gonna be seeing and I'm going to turn down screen space reflections. As I mentioned, reflections, lighting, and shadow is really what tanks your frame rate, so these are the settings you wanna turn down. I've adjusted five settings here, which really isn't a big deal, and I'm going to hit apply and run the benchmark one more time. The benchmark is done, and we increased our average frame rate by a lot. We're getting almost 47 FPS now, which is a huge improvement for just a few small tweaks in the settings. You know what hardware you have, and with a little practice, you'll know how far you can push some settings and where you need to sacrifice. Here, I just turned down a few settings and I'm already getting a massive performance improvement, so make sure you go beyond what the presets recommend. Moving on, we have Windows Game Mode and Razer's Game Booster. They're both driving at the same goal, but they're just doing it in slightly different ways. They're both one-click solutions to optimize a ton of little things on your PC that don't do much on their own, but when put together can have some pretty big performance improvements. Game mode is turned on by default in Windows, but it never hurts to double check. Use Windows key plus S and search for game mode to pull it up and then toggle it on if it's off. As you can see here, it's already turned on and I didn't do that before I started shooting. Game mode basically kills a bunch of background processes that are running whenever you start playing a game. And it can have a little bit of an impact on certain hardware, but overall, it doesn't make that big of a difference. I'm a fan of Razer Game Booster, which is basically a souped up version of game mode. It comes through Razer Cortex and it's free even if you don't own any Razer products. Inside, you wanna move over to the Boost tab and check the box at the top that says Auto Boost. Then head to the Settings menu and check the box to have Razer Cortex start when your system does. Basically, whenever you launch a game, Game Booster will kick in and automatically optimize your PC. So how's it doing that? If you look inside Cortex, you can see all the things that Game Booster is doing. It's a combination of cleaning out junk files, killing background processes, and waking all of your CPU cores, among a bunch of other small things. If you want, you can even go in and check or uncheck the things you want to change. I took the Cyberpunk benchmark out again with Razer Game Booster turned on, and I went up to an average of 50 frames per second, which really isn't bad for a, a one-click solution. There's no secret sauce here, so if you want, you could just do everything Game Booster is doing on your own. I like everything that Game Booster does, but if you don't want to bloat your PC with more software, Game Mode is an option too. Finally, you can overclock your graphics card, which sounds way scarier than it actually is. There are a few important things to keep in mind though. This really isn't for laptops. You can overclock a laptop GPU, but you shouldn't unless you know what you're doing. Every laptop has a different cooling and power situation, so it's best to leave your card at its default settings. Outside of that, make sure your desktop has plenty of power and cooling. Overclocking pushes your GPU beyond what it's rated for, so you need some extra headroom with your power supply and plenty of airflow moving throughout your PC. Oh, and by the way, if you're using a pre-built, overclocking may void your warranty, so keep that in mind too. Not scared off yet? Let's dig in. The process is different for AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards. For NVIDIA, download MSI Afterburn. 
It's what I personally use for GPU overclocking, but there's EVGA Precision X1 and Asus GPU Tweak, along with overclocking tools from AMD and NVIDIA. I personally use MSI Afterburner because it has a one-click overclocking tool. Afterburner has a bunch of different skins available, so yours may not look exactly the same as mine. The process for overclocking is identical though. Close out of all your background apps and then open up MSI Afterburner. Once you're inside, press Ctrl and F at the same time to open up the Voltage Curve Editor. Look in the top right corner for OC Scanner and click it, and then after that, click Scan. It takes about 20 minutes for Afterburner to scan your hardware and apply a safe overclock. Just leave your PC alone while this is happening and you should return to an overclocked GPU. Once you're done, save it at one of the profiles on the bottom and you can recall the overclock anytime you want. AMD, which I'm using for my machine here, has an automatic overclocking tool in Radeon software. You should already have the latest version of Radeon software installed because well, that's where you find new graphics card drivers. Open it up and click the performance tab at the top and then select the tuning menu under that. There are two sections here, automatic tuning and manual tuning. For right now, stick to automatic tuning and you should see anywhere from two to four profiles there. Default, which should already be selected, is your baseline profile and is what you should return to if you have any problems with overclocking. For now, click on Overclock GPU and wait. Like Afterburner, it'll scan your system and apply an overclock in about 20 minutes. My particular RX 580 didn't play well with the automatic overclock, so I just dialed in a quick and dirty manual overclock, boosting the clock speed by about 10%. Manual overclocking is a much more in-depth topic, so leave me a comment if you want to see a video on that in the future. With the overclock, my average frame rate jumped up to 54 FPS, which brings 38 all the way up to 54 by just changing a few basic things. None of this is really complex, and your improvements might even be higher depending on what hardware you have. Let me know what worked for you in the comments below, and leave any questions you have about optimizing your PC for gaming. While you're down there, make sure to leave a like if you enjoy the video and get subscribed. If you want some more digital trends content, here are two videos I think you'll enjoy.